Joining me now is Conservative MP for Stevenage, Stephen McPartland. He led a rebellion against the fire safety bill backed by 31 other Tories. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming in the studio today. Good to see you, Gloria. So we will be hearing from mm. Michael Gove about 3.30, we think, in the House of Commons this afternoon. You've been a, a vocal critic of the government's inaction on dangerous cladding. Is he going to say enough this afternoon to get you on side? Well, he's going to say almost enough to get us on side. <clears throat> he's actually done a very good job. He's listened with us. He's worked constructively with us. We're now up to the level of £9 billion to support leaseholders. So today is going to be another big victory for leaseholders, another step on the way. But I still need to see, so I need a bit more reassurance, as do my colleagues. And there are two areas that we're um, very concerned about. So the first is um, cladding is an external fire safety defect. But there are also internal fire safety defects, such as missing fire breaks. Now, as we've seen with the terrible events overnight in New York, missing fire, fire breaks are incredibly important because they stop fire spreading from flat to flat inside. And they were also the responsibility of developers. So we need, to, we need clarification that this money is also, and the, also going to go after the developers for internal as well as external fire safety. Now, Matthew Pratt, the chief executive of house builder Redrow, uh, said you can't keep putting all the responsibility for this on developers. Now, you might say, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? But surely these builders must have been following building regulations. And if they weren't tough enough, then isn't that the fault of politicians? Well, this is something we've spoken to Michael about a great deal because he has been listening and working with us on this. And there is the reality that some of these buildings were actually probably built illegally. Um, they have missing fire breaks, which, according to the design guidance, should have been there. And there is an issue around the regulatory regime and then enforcement over it. So um, what we're going to hear today is very positive for leaseholders, but they've been in a very difficult position for many years and our buildings are not safe. And the question that the campaign groups have is whether this is a partial solution to the problem. Uh, End our cladding scandal campaign group spokesperson put it like this. The government is still focusing on cladding, but they know full well it goes beyond that. And people are still facing life changing costs. And it's, as you say, leaseholders in buildings with other fire safety problems. Are you going to seal the deal on that? Or are these campaign groups right to be concerned that it's not going to be the full deal. Oh, no, I mean, we've worked with them for over 12 months. And um, we'd be, I remember um, one of the first um, comments we did to launch it was I asked the previous Secretary of State to, you know, um, get out of the ivory tower, stop talking and start helping. And I think we're in a position where we're £9 billion on in terms of help and support. And people understand a lot more about the issue. But, you know, a lot of our buildings are safe and there's been a lot of gold plating. And uh, some of our buildings are not safe. And what Michael's going to try and do is work with us and the cladding groups. And I know we will have met the cladding groups today to ensure that there's good communication, good conversations, and we focus our energies on those buildings that are not safe and get them safe for those leaseholders. Uh, the Treasury's made clear that there won't be any new money to remove cladding. Um, so if Michael Goh's plans don't work, he's put the developers on notice that they're going to have to foot the bill. Mm. But for example, what, what if they say, well, no, then that means cuts in the levelling up budget if it has to come from inside the budget. Is that likely to be um, to happen? Because, of course, those new voters that you got, they need that money spent in those areas, don't they? Oh, yeah, very much so. So the £5 billion's come from the Treasury. This is an additional £4 billion. And one of the things that we've always asked for is for the government to put the money up front and then claim it back from the developers. So in fairness, Michael's doing what myself and the least other groups have actually asked for over um, all these months. So I think the developers will cough up because it's going to be in their interest if they don't. The Treasury have said we can use the tax system to go after them for it. And final question to you. It's more than four years since Grenfell. Those images will haunt us all forever. Why has it taken so long to get to this place? Um, I I genuinely don't know. I mean, one of the things that I found incredibly frustrating all the way through was that everybody we spoke to and tried to work with within government and civil service, within the industries, they just continued to make the problem bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got harder and harder. But, you know, instead of it being we're trying to fix three or four problems, it became fixing three or four hundred problems. So many things got pulled in. And one of the things Michael has done is actually sat down and tried to work with us to iron out what are the real issues and how can we deliver for leaseholders. Stephen McPartland, uh, Conservative MP for Stephen. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show today. I hope to, we see you again. And Thanks, I hope, I hope you hear everything you want to hear this afternoon Me in the too. statement. Thanks very much. Thanks. Indeed.